Welcome, everyone. We are so glad you are here and uh, that we have an opportunity to gather in prayer as we close out Monday, the sixth week after the Epiphany. We are in the waning days of the uh, of Epiphany tide. I am uh, I'm feeling that keenly as I start to think about uh, Lent and Ash Wednesday and Lent and Holy Week and Easter tide. Um, you know, clergy were always a season ahead uh, of folks as they're experiencing this liturgical and pastoral moment. Um, I'll ask your prayers because I had one of those days wherein I did an amazing amount of work on Lent and Holy Week and Ash Wednesday. And the literally the last two things I intended to do for the day, I inadvertently erased the entire day's work. So it all has to be reassembled from scratch. And uh, it just gives me an opportunity for prayer. I am so glad to be here with you all in this. And uh, particularly as I got a chance to read ahead, I think these readings will give me comfort and consolation. But it's great to have you with us. If you're watching on YouTube, please let us know that you are there. Give comments and remarks and intercessions and thanksgivings in that section provided. Like and subscribe and hit notifications when we're posting content. If you're watching on Facebook, please do if you have any intercessions or thanksgivings uh, to put those into the live chat and to consider following us and joining us on a regular basis. If you wish to even join us in person, let us know. Pop an email to our office and we'll make sure you get the Zoom link and can join us in person uh, if I'm sorry, in real time, as opposed to being in person, because we do this virtually. But it's great to have you with us and honored to welcome you home to St. Peter's. It is time for evening prayer. Here we go. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me in unison for the invitatory. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The second half of Psalm 89, I'll offer the odd, please respond with the even. Then you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said, I have set the crown on one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I, found my I have found David. my servant David my with my I holy him. oil. I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him and my arm shall also strengthen him. The enemy shall not, the enemy shall him. not outwit the him. Wicked shall the not wicked him. shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness, my faithfulness and steadfast shall love him. shall be with in him. Name, his horn and in my name, exalted. his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me. He shall cry to me. Father, you are my father, my God, father, and, the my God and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. Forever I will keep my forever will I keep my steadfast love for him. And my covenant and my covenant with, with him firm. will stand firm. I will establish his line forever and his throne as long as the heavens endure. If his children forsake if my his law, children forsake my law and my do not walk according to my ordinances. If they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments. 
Then I will punish their transgression. Then I will punish their the transgression their with the rod the and their iniquity with the scourges. But I will not remove from him my steadfast love or be false to my faithfulness. I will not violate my I covenant. I will not violate my all covenant or alter the word that went forth from my lips. Once and for all I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall continue. His line shall continue forever, continue and his throne endure like before me like the sun. It shall be established forever like the moon, an enduring witness in the skies. But now you have spurned and rejected. But now you have spurned and rejected him. Against your anointed. You are full of wrath against your anointed. You have renounced the covenant with your servant. You have defiled his crown in the dust. You have broken through all his. You have broken walls. through all you his walls. You have laid ruins. his strongholds in ruins. All who pass by plunder him. He has become the scorn of his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand. You have exalted the right hand of his foes. You have, made all his, you have made all his enemies rejoice. Moreover, you have turned back the edge of his sword, and you have not supported him in battle. You have removed the scepter. You have from removed the scepter from his hand and hurled his throne, throne to the ground. You have cut short the days of his youth. You have covered him with shame. How long, O oh Lord? How long, O oh Lord, will you, will you hide, hide yourself forever? forever? How long? How long will, will your wrath burn, burn fire? like fire? And remember how short my time is, for what vanity you have created all mortals. Who can live and, Who never, can see live and never see Who death? Can escape, the power, can escape the power of Sheol? Lord, where is your steadfast love of old, which by your faithfulness you swore to David? Remember, O oh Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, how taunted. your servant is taunted. How I how bear, I bear in, my in my bosom the insults of the peoples. With which your enemies taunt, O oh Lord, with which they taunted the footsteps of your anointed. Blessed be the Lord forever. Blessed be the Lord amen. forever. And amen. amen and amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope. To Timothy, my loyal child in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I urge you, as I did when I was on my way to uh, Macedonia to remain in Ephesus so that you may instruct certain people not to teach any different doctrine and not to occupy themselves with myths and endless genealogies that promote speculation rather than the divine training that is known by faith. But the aim of such instruction is love that comes from a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. Some people have de deviated from these and turned to meaningless talk, desiring to be teachers of the law without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which they make assertions. Now we know that the law is good if one uses it legitimately. This means understanding that the law is laid down not for the innocent, but for the lawless and disobedient for the godless and sinful, for the unholy and profane, for those who kill their father or mother, for murderers, fornicators, sodomites, slave traders, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to the sound teaching that conforms to the glorious gospel of the beloved God, which he entrusted to me. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy so that in me as the foremost, 
Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle this evening is the Song of Mary. Together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever, amen. Reading from John. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man or his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent him, sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle is the Song of Simeon, together. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Grant us your salvation. Grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Guide us in the way of justice. Guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. You're saving saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Where the hope of the poor, the hope of the poor away. be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain, and us, sustain with your us with your Holy Spirit. O God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because in our weakness you can do not, we can do nothing good without you. Give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. O God and Father of all whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you. All nations obey you. All tongues confess and bless you. And men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. I ask for prayers for Lorraine, who is dealing with major health issues right now. Pray for Father Juan and the people of All Saints Lakewood. Uh, Father Juan had a stroke on Sunday and is in the ICU after his operations and treatment for that stroke. Pray for his swift healing and pray for the consolation of his pastoral charges and for all those who are caring for him. Pray for Marge, for Jennifer and Ed. Pray for all those who are recovering from treatment and also for those because of the turn in the weather are homeless and outside right now that they may find shelter and warmth. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Laura. Thank you. All right, folks, it is wonderful to have seen you all this evening and bid you peace and grace as we head off into the eventide hours. If you have uh, Valentine celebrations to enjoy, please do. If you instead you are observing the feast of Cyril and Methodius, um, 
monks and bishops, uh, please do uh, learn a little bit of Old Church Slavonic and see uh, how that sits in the evening as well. And anything, uh, know that we will be back here at 9 a.m. tomorrow and celebrating the life of Christ with morning prayer. Please hope you can join us and know that you are always welcome home at St. Peter's. Remember to like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, follow us on Facebook, and partake of that journey that we take every week as we pray the offices. For now, take care and God bless. Bye. Bye.